There we go. Uh, to our, uh, welcome on into our user group webinar uh, for Church Windows version 18, uh, which we are going to talk about uh, the process we are going to go through uh, when it's time to install version 18 on your computers. Um, uh, so uh, this version uh, of the program uh, is finished. It is being sent out in groups on CDs out to all of our customers, so you may or probably may not have yet re received the version 18 disk. So that should be on its way. Uh, and what we're going to be talking about over the course of the next 20 or so minutes is the process we're going to go through uh, to install uh, that version of the program. Uh, welcome on in here. My name is Jim. I'm coming to you live on a cool autumn day here in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, come on in, pull up a seat. Let's talk about installing version 18. Uh, before we do that, uh, I want to mention your GoToWebinar control panel that you should have on your screen right now. Uh, small control panel with a, a red button with an arrow on it, probably in the upper left-hand corner of that of that window, uh, that you can click on that button to either minimize the control panel to open up a little more space to see what we're talking about in our class here today, or maximize it to get access to uh, the control panel itself and the features therein, including the questions portion. Uh, I'm joined here today by Ross, uh, who over here with Church Windows, who's going to be helping me uh, answer any questions that you may have as we go through. Please keep uh, questions general. Um, about the topic of installation uh, of, of, of our program here. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the, the computer that I'm connected to here, I'm going to go ahead and launch Church Windows to show you. Uh, this computer is running version 17.14.4 uh, of Church Windows, uh, which is a compatible version uh, that you can use to install version uh, 18.15.0, which is our newly released version. Uh, you can also perform the upgrade installation to version 18 uh, if you are running version 16.13. But if you are running 16.13, uh, you must be running the donations module as well as the accounting module uh, in that in that version of our program. So you can skip version 17 and go straight from 16 all the way up to 18 provided you have converted to the accounting module as well as the donations module there in version 16. Okay, so um, some of the uh, uh, details here. Now, uh, the, the version of uh, the program that I'm running here, this copy that we're looking at on our screen is a local copy. In, that, in other words, it's installed right here on this computer. Uh, this uh, icon that I double clicked on to open it up from is right here on our C drive, C colon backslash CW. Uh, for folks that are running church windows on a network, they will have what's called a workstation install of church windows on their computer. Uh, this machine that we're going to be running the update on also has one of those installations on it. So we'll see what both of those upgrades look like when we run our installation. Before we do that, I want to talk about some of the things that you'll want to do beforehand. I always recommend whenever you're going to run an update of our program is to make sure that you get a good backup of your data just in case something goes wrong. It's always better to have a backup and not need it than it is to need a backup and not have it. So uh, running a, a backup of church windows is simply a matter of in the program going to your admin button and clicking on the backup button there. I'm going to go ahead and run a backup of everything. I made a backup folder on the desktop of this machine that I'm going to browse to. There's my backup folder. You could very easily also, uh, and commonly will, backup to a USB drive listed here under computer. It would probably be listed as PK back on that view. But in this case, we're just going to run a backup to this folder on the desktop. 
So that's going to go through its process there. Um, ah, minor glitch here. One of the statement layouts didn't uh, back up properly, but we got the we got our, our backup successfully there. Um, and when I exit out of the program, I'll show you. There's our backup, the CWMSDA file. All right. So in our CD drive on our computer over here, we've got version 18 disk. When I double click on that, here is the welcome window that you get when you put the CD into your drive. Uh, we always recommend that you close out of any programs that you have open uh, to free up as many resources as you can for the installation process that's going to take place on your computer. And then you simply click on where it says install church windows. When you do so, it's going to start your extraction process here uh, for the installation files that it needs. There's the window that shows you that it's doing that. There are several components. We'll talk about that. So it takes you to this uh, Welcome to the Install Shield Wizard window. Clicking Next will begin its process. This window is where it's going to show you uh, the copies of church windows on your computer that it's going to be updating. So you see here's that C colon backslash CW installation for this icon that we opened the program from earlier. And we also have a workstation install on here which would allow us to run the program across a network if we needed to. So however many lines you see here is how many times the church windows part of the installation is going to run through and we'll take a look at that as we go. When we click next uh, the installer gives you this window it may need to update or install various components that includes our back-end database that we use called the Microsoft SQL Server. When you click next now it's going through its process of checking the components on your computer that will need to be updated. Sometimes during your installation uh, you'll get uh, situations like this where there's nothing on your window. Uh, it's kind of doing what it needs to do in the background and it's usually best to just kind of wait uh, as opposed to kind of uh, getting impatient and clicking around. Really one of the worst things you can do uh, during an installation is to interrupt a process like this when it's uh, going through it here. Uh, but the installer now is checking Windows components on the computer. Um, the uh, SQL server, the Microsoft SQL server that we used for our back-end database from version 17 to version 18 has been updated. So we used to use the version 2008 R2 the SQL server versions and on the current version of Church Windows we've upgraded as you see on the screen here to SQL Server 2012. Uh, so it's going to go through the process of installing those components first. So here is our first installation window for the SQL server. Notice that gap that happened between when I clicked next and but and when it gave us another window to kind of interact with. That's a good lesson when you click next to begin your installation just kind of be patient with it and let it do its thing there. Um, there's going to be uh, a couple of these SQL server windows that are going to pop open on your computer here and it will show you the progress as it goes through. Um, some of our customers, some of the folks uh, when you run this installation on your computer, prior to even getting these SQL Server 2012 windows, you'll also get a window before this where it's in, in updating a different component called uh, the .NET Framework. It's another Microsoft component. There's a particular version of the .NET Framework that has to be installed prior to installing the SQL 2012. So some folks will see another installation window prior to this. Uh, and oftentimes that .NET Framework window will require a reboot of your computer. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. You know, some folks before you get to this window where it's upgrading the SQL Server, uh, you'll get those installation windows for the .NET there. Uh, 
I have noticed in my dealings with uh, installing this version of SQL, SQL, that the 2012 version is a bit more, uh, it's a bit of a bigger program. Let's call it a more robust program uh, than 2008 R2. So the installation, in my observation, uh, has been taken a little bit longer <laughs> than uh, the 2008 had. So uh, it also might be a good idea to get a nice fresh cup of coffee sometimes before sitting down to run this update because uh, unfortunately uh, programs and computers aren't getting smaller and less complicated. They're getting bigger and more complicated. So uh, the installation can take a bit under, under certain circumstances. Good times, yeah, so we're letting this run through. Uh, and again, once this has completed, uh, we're going to see our actual church windows installation windows will appear after that. The installations, by the way, seem like they've been going pretty well this, this time around. Um, the uh, Church Windows version 18 installer, uh, just speaking from a, a, a support staff standpoint here, the folk, you know, me being one of the folks who takes phone calls from people when they install the program, seems like it's been a pretty stable installation this time around. Uh, so the, the SQL part, uh, has completed. So now it is preparing the things it needs to get in place to actually update our program, the church windows portion of the installation uh, will be popping up next. I probably should have prepared more filler material here for this particular webinar, but uh, as for as per normal, uh, installations are as much hurry up and wait as anything uh, in terms of what you're doing with your computer here. We see our little I, our little pointer blinking and being busy, so the computer is extracting the files it needs now to begin the next portion of its installation here. Okay, so now this part right here is the actual church windows portion of our installation. Uh, so uh, on this first window you simply click next. This is the win now what it's going to do is it's going to take us through each of the installations on the uh, the first window is going to show you which of the installs it's updating. You'll see underneath path here. This is the local C colon backslash CW installation that it's working on now. So clicking install will begin that process. gives you updates on the screen, of course, as to what it's doing as it goes through. This part of the install, generally speaking, is going to go by a lot faster than that SQL server portion of the install. Famous last words. Okay, so when um, the installation has completed, it takes you to the window with the finish button. Uh, the, the show the Windows installer log checkbox here uh, really only needs to be done if you're troubleshooting some kind of error. Uh, if you do this, it's really going to be a bunch of stuff that doesn't mean anything to your normal you know, end user. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on finish. 
Now remember from before when we saw that there were two installations on this computer. There was that C colon backslash CW installation and then the workstation install. So the church windows installer will run through for as many different installs of the program that you have on your computer. So now it's going to take us to the second upgrade. When I click next, it's going to show us on this window where it shows installation type of workstation right here. So simply clicking install here, it will begin that process. And when it completes, uh, it gives you the finish button right here. Uh, when you, whenever you run the workstation installation and you click finish, it takes you to this window uh, where it asks you if you want to create a desktop shortcut to the main install of church windows on your network. Normally, if you already have uh, your network up and running, you can simply use the, the shortcut that you already have on your desktop, but if you need to create a new shortcut, you click your yes button here. Uh, it takes you to this run to create shortcut window here, and double clicking on this would allow you to then uh, make a shortcut to the main install of Church Windows. Uh, I'm not going to do that here because I don't really have a hosted version of Church Windows available to me here that I care to connect to. Uh, but under normal circumstances, if you already have your network up and running and you're upgrading, uh, you don't want to click yes to that anyhow because you can just use the shortcut that you already have. So when you're, at, when you're done with that, the installation cleans up and you're finished. Under normal circumstances, that's all there is to it. So now when I go ahead and go to launch my program by double clicking on my icon on my desktop here, this will take a little bit longer than normal when you open church windows because it is going through the process of upgrading the backend databases to support the new features in church windows. So all of the new things that we've got available in church windows, specifically the attendance portion and membership, as well as the personal visits portion, as well as any other parts of the program that have little updates built into it, uh, that first time you open up the program, it takes a little bit longer than normal. Uh, so here we see version 18.15.0 in the upper right hand corner of the screen here. And that is, uh, that is all. That's the entire process uh, of upgrading church windows. Uh, so uh, again, uh, the install has been going really well. Everybody, uh, all of our customers who have gotten the CD, it seems like it's been running really nicely for everybody. Simply a matter of putting the CD into the drive when you get your welcome window, clicking on install and following the screens from there. Uh, the main thing I would, as we've seen here on our webinar, I would point out to folks and I'd have folks look out for is that when you first click next after the original install screen, sometimes there's not going to be a lot for you to interact with on your window. Um, and you just kind of want to wait for it to, to, to give you something to interact with. Uh, but there you go. That is a quick uh, preview of what the windows are going to look like and some of the things to look out for uh, when you get your church windows version 18 disc in the mail. Uh, so that's all I got for you guys today. So I hope uh, uh, that was valuable time for you. Uh, if you're all set and you're ready to get on with your afternoon, feel free to go ahead and click on the X in the upper right hand corner of your GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, and I'd like to thank you so much for joining me here today. Uh, if you've got any questions, uh, specific questions about the installation, feel free to, I'm going to leave the, uh, the webinar room open for a little bit if you have any questions for us at this time, but uh, thanks for joining me everybody.
Okay, a couple of questions coming through. If the original screen uh, does show contributions on it, the installation will detect that and it will not let you install this version of Church Windows. It will, it'll simply tell you that your install has not been upgraded from contributions and it simply will not install is all that is. Um, and let's see, if you already have a shortcut created, when you get that one question, it asks you if uh, you want the installer to create a shortcut for you already. It'll say yes or no. Just click no on that. Uh, and, and the installer will go away and you will simply uh, use the same uh, shortcut that you had before. Uh, and you'll be able to use uh, that going forward. Yep, just click no if you've already got your installation. Yeah, like I said, Holly, uh, about problems that you may have had in the past upgrading to version 17 from version 16. Uh, the reports coming in uh, from, from our customers, it seems like the install's going pretty cleanly. I wouldn't anticipate... Uh, the same type of problem that you had previously if you had an installation problem uh, with version 16 going to 17. Um, that specific behavior where you had to uninstall the workstation installs before you could put a new one on there. Um, I can't promise it won't happen again, of course, but uh, early returns are pretty good. That type of thing hasn't really been happening too much. So I would anticipate it going cleanly this time through. Uh, yeah, uh, the different service releases uh, for version 17. You can upgrade uh, to the current version of Church Windows, this 18.15, if you're on 17.14.0, 17.14.1, 17.14.23, or 4. You do not have to upgrade uh, to the SR4 in version 17 before installing 18. So if you've got an earlier service release on 17, don't worry about it. You can upgrade straight to 18 there. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, uh, compatibility. Uh, Windows 8 is a compatible operating system, uh, Church Windows version 18 for desktop operating systems. You're fine if you've got Windows 7, 8, or 10. Uh, if you've got Windows Vista, it is on our compatibility list, uh, but Windows Vista computers are certainly getting long in the tooth now. Uh, so it should install and it should run, but it may be slow. I wouldn't be one bit surprised if it performs slowly on an older Windows Vista computer, but any Windows 7, any Windows 8, that includes 8.1, uh, and uh, Windows 10, we are compatible with all of those operating systems, as well as uh, server versions 2008 and up. So 2008, 2008 R2, 2012, 2012 R2, all of those server installations should be fine. Uh, Windows Server Standard FE, I think, is based on Server 2008. Uh, don't quote me on that. I don't exactly know 100%. I think Server Standard FE is one of the versions of Server 2008. Uh, so I believe that's compatible. You might want to Google it. You know, just kind of go to Google and look up uh, Server Standard FE and make sure. Uh, uh, that that's one of those versions. I think that's a 2008 server, though. A uh, question about upgrading to Windows 10. 
uh, before installing church windows or after installing church windows. If you want to do both, if you want to upgrade to Windows 10 and install the new version of church windows, the order I would do it in is I would upgrade to Windows 10 first. Um, uh, and then after your uh, operating system has been upgraded to Windows 10, then go ahead and uh, run the version 18 installer after that. If you do it in the other order, uh, you install Church Windows 18 and then upgrade the, to Windows 10, uh, it might overwrite some of the stuff Church Windows needs. Uh, and you you know may have to reinstall Church Windows anyway. So uh, I would upgrade the operating system first before you go into uh, installing uh, Church Windows. Okay. All right. Uh, for folks who are still on the old contributions module, um, on our website here at churchwindows.com, uh, here's our churchwindows.com website. If you scroll down underneath the blue bubble where it says using church windows, there's a link on the left side right here that says conversion transition. And there's more information about what you need to do to get from the contributions module to donations. Right here on this page, there's the contributions to donations preparation document. And then there's a movie on here that'll walk you through everything you need to do to get converted to the new donations module in preparation for upgrading to version 18. So uh, again, at churchwindows.com, everything you need to know about that is over here on the left side where it says conversion transition. Just going to give another minute or two for any other questions uh, that are coming in, and then I'll close the room and let everybody get on with their day. Oh yeah, uh, Eric asks about installing on a network. Really, uh, the order that you do your installations, it doesn't really matter, but the, the program will need to be updated at your server as well as on all of your workstation computers. Uh, and the first time you open the program should be from that server computer. So um, usually the order is going to be you'll install the new version at the server computer open the program to make sure it looks like it's in good shape there then go through your process of updating all of the workstations that's generally how that should be done
All right, folks, I'm going to go ahead and close up the room here. Uh, thank you so much for being here uh, with me today, everybody. If you have any further questions, feel free to let us know. Our support line number is at 800 533 5227 if you have any questions about installing the program or anything about your your disk or anything along those lines just give us a call so uh, thanks so much for joining me everybody and I hope you have a lovely afternoon bye now